had to change some batteries. We're back. We'll stop again for some lunch. We gotta eat. That's <laughs> yes. what we do here. We, but then the two things we do here is talk and eat. Sausage. So hey, Ibu just tell get the boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she's ordering. <laughs> She calls, she's like, listen, for breakfast I want sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? But actually, that's something, that's something huge. What's it about sausage? What is it about, what is it about the sausage here? I mean, it is just the authentic, organic stuff, mm. you know. Um, even the size of the sausages <laughs> matter, you know. Because um, yep. actually, I mean, you could actually eat that and and you're, and you're good, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, the American sausages, were, it's, they're just different. Yeah. Uh, uh, here maybe because they're fresh. I mean, it's it's the way they're cooked. Yeah. But I yeah, I'ma eat the whole Kenyan. I'ma I'ma I'm tear up the whole Nairobi today and eat <laughs> sausage all day because I leave tomorrow. Oh, uh, Jacks. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, before you leave, let's continue this conversation. Yeah. Then. Thank you first of all for giving us your day. So, I've understood you're this first job. You've done your you've done your double masters, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and you've touched one of them touches in the HR world. Mm-hmm. So when's the first promotion my first promotion came and like i just said after i i mean when when i have finished my school my dig my two degrees had my first job um i was at a company where was i it was um one africa or something what what is, what is the company no they they actually it was it was i'm trying to because i started counterpart international then i went to elizabeth glazier um can't remember which company but anyway my first promotion came after i had done that admin job for like about two three years mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. and that again after i felt like once i got my degree i had a little bit more leeway mm-hmm. um and experience experience makes a difference too yeah um but again it also i, I powerful I, experience ex- makes a difference yeah experience makes a difference so it's again but again, I had both, right? I had the school and I had the experience. So I was like, why, why are they not giving me a promotion? Uh, and one thing I learned is that you got to ask for it. Mm. Sometimes you got to ask because, again, you might think, oh, wow, can they, of course, do they see my skill set? Mm. They see my education. I do great. Um, but to them, they're fine. They're, they're, I think it's okay. They'll pay you. Mm. Well, well. In fact, they just want you to keep doing your job. Yeah, keep doing yep. your job, right? So I learned that it's like make you ask when you when you make you ask about where you want to be in your career. You've got to be very. Uh, you've got to be your own advocate, basically. Mm. Period. I learned that. Yep. You know, very early on in my career, because literally I could have probably stayed at that job. And once I got my first promotion into the HR generalist, that's when I was like, "Aha! Uh-huh, mm-hmm. This is how things go." <laughs> nice, right? nice. Um, so that's when I think I actually started feeling a little bit more. Um, what do you call it? Like just uh, uh, more more uh, secure about myself uh-huh, in terms uh-huh. of my career, mm-hmm. right? Um, and you got a reward for the hard work that yeah, you've been doing. Yeah, you did. When you get a promotion, you'll get a salary increase. Yep. You know, um, and that felt good, right? I was like, okay, finally, I'm 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 making traction, um, you know. And I kind of started believing in myself a little bit more, you know. And and so now, yeah, I just I just started working hard, as you know, mm. putting on a lot of work. Was that was that a, a bit more fire to the wood to the fire yeah in terms of okay we've taken a step forward it happened i went to school it opened these doors i'm, I'm headed somewhere i'm headed somewhere yeah. yeah yeah and again you still you work at that same job again patience right and the patience and timing is the biggest thing mm. right um keeping your eye open of okay when is this opportunity to bring this up because mm, there's a wrong opportunity there's to a wrong opportunity i mean there's a wrong time to ask about promotion. about promotions right like um it's i, I don't know if it's the, i don't know if there's a criteria or mood mm. but there is like you know it's it's it just fig- you have to figure out the right time and you have to be in tune what are some of those things that made you know this may be the right time what are some of the things that it's probably my my boss was was a little bit more of uh, backing up like a little bit more and I could be like okay you know and, and even maybe introducing me more to more of the executives mm-hmm. like I started getting a window into now the top right uh-huh. so then um, was a crack you saw. yeah I say ah, I see it I see it right uh, so there's this crack I, I saw so that to me was the moment where I knew okay you know they're, they're starting to see that wow she, she she's actually a great 
worker, you know. Mm. And I started being a little bit more, bringing up my ideas a little bit more. Okay, not, so now it was time to bring up your yeah, ideas. Yeah, now it was time to bring up my ideas. Okay. Um, and 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 yeah, try to you know push push the envelope, push it a little bit, uh, in terms of when things, especially in HR, you know, because at that point you're kind of trying to bridge the balance between the company needs and the people needs right like mm. you know individual yep. who comes to me and i i know because i'm like wow why can they give this person a promotion the person is doing great you know um but also the corporate world again nah, they, we, we, we don't see that person we're not trying to do that mm. you know so that's when Ooh, i started that's crazy yeah. okay like let's talk, in fact let's talk a little bit about your role in this mm-hmm. because now you like you exactly like you said under hr you're no longer on the people's you're no longer on the employee side you're like the bridge between the the executives and the employees like yeah 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 so it's it's what were your day-to-day tasks like uh, so my day-to-day tasks was um when i when i started as hr in my first in my first year was more of actually doing like more of performance uh, Mm -hmm. reviews for Mm -hmm. people um i did a lot of recruitment like started now and that's why again i started doing like a lot of recruitment for global Mm -hmm. you know so that's why i started you know uh you know hiring like expatriates going into kenya or yeah. going into asia or going into whatever iraq or something like that uh so it was a lot of recruitment uh it was a lot of performance management um i began to do training and development just making sure that you know people are like if they want to go back to school and get some certification that i'm supporting those mm. um working with training managers a lot on like how to actually treat people you mm. know uh or how to support your staff you know and how to see the best in people mm. that became probably my niche when i started yeah yeah and that's when i was like you know um there was something about i think just me being able to connect with people that a lot of managers felt mm. so i became i started doing a lot of employee relations and that's where now in my I career know. <laughs> the coaching started right exactly i'm hearing you speak i'm like you are in the training ground for what you would come and talk to yeah. people later about yeah or what you're doing right now what i'm doing right now and yeah. how was it working with were you in the firing section as well i was that must have been hard that was the hardest part that was the hardest part and actually it's funny um I, now I, that's the dirty work that you mm-hmm. do right that's mm-hmm. the dirty work yeah so i did i did that as well uh, and that's why it was really hard to balance the corporate and and the the work of the person you know mm-hmm. because you're like wow is, i mean give them you know is that that person is might maybe not that bad they probably just need a lot of the training uh sometimes people didn't look at the managers the problem it's more mm. like oh the employees a problem because again you know they're not going to say the employees a problem you know but mm. it could be the managers mm. but they're they're seated at the top so you know there's nothing much you could do about that um so so that was tough how long that, how, how long were you in this position i was there in position for about two two three years and again, alas, did you like it? Did you like what you were doing? I did. I mm. did. I did. I, the part of my job that I loved most was that mm. the employee relation piece, the piece where I was, you know, talking to people, giving people advice, and 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 hearing what they want to do and how to have a conversation. Mm. If you're like, if if you're feeling overlooked by your your manager, um, that became my strength. You know, that became my huge huge strength. Yeah, and and in terms of this organization, how many people are we talking about? Oh wow globally you're, you're looking at about of a thousand yo people yeah but in the if you so but we were also in the headquarters office like in dc you're mm. looking at about 100 to but, 200 but people. you're managing i mean your your hr is you're under this 1000 are still under you yeah it's a whole umbrella of people right uh so you're looking at both the u.s people and you're also looking at like the global local people right mm. you're looking at the you actually couldn't and, and a lot of this NGOs, the ones that I at least worked with, had like HR representative in this country. Yes, right? of course. So yeah. you're the one who's kind of teaching them, you know, kind of empowering them, the and culture training and them, all those stuff, stuff. and a culture in them. If you know, they always used to say, "I don't know what you are doing in the U.S." and you know, the decisions we make here uh, were not always translating into the local. And I see why. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, even just me being here this few weeks you know with the internet connection yep. i was saying yep, like, yep. you know sometimes the lights go out like it, it's just one of those things like you there's nothing much you could do if you you might leave work here not you might leave home at seven but you might not get to work till 10 just because of the traffic mm. um, and there's just no way around it you know and also 
um did that now affect your working hours what uh, what, what about if you're having a conversation with somebody in kenya and you're there at night see that was the thing they didn't care <laughs> Uh, or maybe that that was not in their mind like uh there is a time difference you know uh, you yeah, like do your job yeah your job, do your you job do this. you know yeah and i became a morning person to be honest i am actually a very very morning person mm. um but you are right depending on what like sometimes when i talk to the people in asia you can only talk to them like at 10 11 o'clock mm. us time so that's you're up pretty late mm. right and then when you're talking to more of the african countries you're doing it at five, six o'clock in the morning because that's their more mid time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have a friend who says, with every level comes a new devil. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes. like, did you feel now like, yo, this is a whole lot more from what I was doing before? Yes. There's a reason why they're paying you more. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why. But also it's, it, it's, wow. I mean, we'll get into this, why I got my, why I left corporate world. Okay. You know, was that, you know, I feel like you, you get to this place and I think somebody said it best. One of my friends, Dina, she said, you, you know, you work so hard. Think about it. All oh, my journey, like I'm going to break through that ceiling. Mm. But when you get there, it's like a whole different, you feel like you're Devil. in the wrong address. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was like, where did the GPS take me? Cause this is not where I, I, I meant to, to, to end up. Yeah. Right um so it the pressure mm. the pressure was crazy and i'm gonna go back to where i said you know my my uh, life as a single mother without that's why it actually took me years to ever tell people that i'm a single mom whoa right because that already will put a stigma to it mm -hmm. they will put you in a box mm. because they're like oh no we can't give her that job because, because she's, she's, she can't adapt she got oh, a baby to take care of right she oh. doesn't have a husband so it took me years to ever say to tell people that yeah a lot of people that i was married kids nah you know people don't think of what it takes to you know get your kids ready in the morning <laughs> by yourself daycare this you know and the kids too my my kids are crazy too <laughs> you know there's a whole different you know job right there mm -hmm. um you know so it, it would limit i felt like it was going to limit my opportunities i get it right so yep. and at this time have you left or are you still with your folks are you still no, I've got my own place now. Actually, I, I bought my own house when she was, again, see motivation. Uh, I bought my first house in 2000. And first. My, yeah. <laughs> first house. I see where we're going. I know. <laughs> There's oh, more than one. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got. I, 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 they didn't give me that kind of money. I, I missed that boat. No, no. I, I had one house. Okay, so so my, my first house. But also, that's another thing in America. To yep. own a home is a very big deal. Mm. You know, there, not like here, um, um, PESA, there is all about credit. Mm, mm. Right? You have you have to have credit mm. to do anything in the U.S., yep. you know. And again, you don't want to put yourself in debt, but, you know, you could go there and pay cash all day, but you will never be able to buy a car unless you're buying mm. cash. And, you mm. know, you ain't got that kind of money to buy, like, a, the yep. houses there. So I bought my yeah, house. So when I was actually in, when I hadn't got my first, when I was being promoted, I actually did buy a house. Okay, you know, nice. Uh, a townhouse, and that's why I live in Maryland right now. Nice. Yeah. And and now so, the pressure was really. I was like, "Where is mommy? I don't want to pay these bills." <laughs> you know, that's why you become like your parents. Turn off the lights. You know, <laughs> Who, who's you got a three minute shower? You know, you know. Like, that's when you become. You. That's when you're like, uh -huh, yep. <laughs> Now you want to be a parent, right? So I mean, yeah, I, I love what you're saying because fine, you got an. Uh, um, promotion and got more money mm -hmm. but you also got a transition which meaning you've got your own house mm -hmm. now your mommy now mommy. there's no support system <laughs> like to take care of the kids after and all nah. that nah. now that's when i felt like wow i'm on my own now you know uh, mm. because again you know now you move out of your house that you know it's just like okay now you're responsible for your own thing yeah uh, i mean it's like you know keep running to your parents to pay your bills right yeah, yeah. um so so yeah that was now that's where my kids went into daycare mm -hmm. i get it you know? you know i was even going to ask you but now i can fully understand when you say you don't come home do you, at this time have you come back to kenya nope no yep 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 actually no but i can i, I can get it yeah. i get it yeah. because one your parents are there yeah two yeah yo you've got to work yeah yeah I'm like, what? Vacation? No, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta make me some money to pay these bills. Yeah, you yeah. are very right. I didn't get to come back 
when I left, I didn't get to come back to Kenya. Mm. So sometimes, so there's, I, I want to sort of, um, sort of make a statement and you can chime in into it mm-hmm. i now so first and foremost when people are calling people abroad and just asking them for money they have no idea about this mm, yeah you get yeah the money just doesn't grow on trees in the states uh yeah. people are doing three jobs four jobs yeah odd jobs yeah. but people also have their own responsibilities mm-hmm. uh what what it, i mean like is, is is that true or not it is so and and, and, and let's go back because we, we had talked about you know uh, why sometimes I, I'm so where I got my education was that right because I felt like I uh, it was good for me where I didn't have to have three jobs you know but a lot of people who come mm. in like without maybe the green card or whatever like you know who can't pay for school mm. you know you find them getting have no choice but to have like three four jobs yeah like where literally they they um they probably don't, I don't know when they sleep or go home mm. right because it's one thing after another they have shifts like you know um so what's it about the states what's this bills thing is uh, it just expensive to be in the states or like like break it down to for me to understand um us to understand mm -hmm. what's what are like the differences that you would see in kenya from the bills perspective because i'm hearing everyone is always working 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 yeah and i think that's 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 the exhausting piece like it's almost you're like doing that rat race right like you're always in a circle uh, and again, it's it's because of the bills. Like everything there is, you pay. Mm. It's expensive. Um, and and like you you know, I mean, you go to college. That's debt. You okay. gotta pay that back. Mm -hmm. So from even a very young age, you know. So were you given, like, so when you say debt, you're given like a student loan. A student loan. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's and, uh -huh. and it's not regulated. They throw money at you, and I, even for that at the, that young age, right? So you'll tell them, oh, okay. Some people even add. Um, so you're not just paying for school. You could add room and board. You could add the food. Like you, some people even. I mean, you could use that money for whatever you want. They literally write you a check. Now imagine at that young age, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody writing you like, a, okay, how much is it? Maybe thirty thousand dollars of school fees for that semester, right? Um, imagine at that age, you know, oh, when you're so man. young in college. Um, so that also is contributing to a lot of the debt. Did you get a student loan? I did get a student loan. Okay. I did. So they they know the day you start working, from your paycheck, there's something called student loan. Yeah. That goes back to pay um, what they give you. Yeah. With interest. With interest. High interest. <laughs> and not only that, again, with the US, it's a credit. It's like more very credit. Actually, I got into my first credit debt when I was at a very young age, like right after college. Mm. right because you have college they give you all this money and then you know it's you live this life that uh like probably you can't even afford mm. you know uh, mm. so it's very easy to get trapped into debt mm. in the u.s very easy because they have they they'll give you the money mm. you know but you're gonna pay it back with, it's like it's like what what kenyans have been given fuliza and 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 and, and Talas and ta so all these mobile loans that they've been yeah, given, yeah. but this is on steroids because this is on steroids. It's, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean. The, the limit is not ten thousand shillings. Yeah. The limit is ten thousand yeah. dollars or, or I, more. I had my first credit card limit at ten thousand dollars. What? At age nineteen, I think that was. And now I try to apply for that. They're like, nah, you know. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? You gave it to me at nineteen, you know? But it feels seriously. I feel I didn't. I didn't never thought about it. it like now I'm smarter. I know I'm not gonna spend, you know, that kind of money, yep. right? But at 19, if you, th you, I got a credit card. 19. Yep. yep. That's insane. Ten thousand dollars, and I ran every single penny of that thing, and it was bad, you know. And then because you gotta pay it back, the interest is ridiculous. Um, okay, I get right? it. Yeah. That's why you see the bills. Like you, you have to be very disciplined. Mm. Um, access to finance but it's not really a finance that it is it's access to loans access in fact that's loans. what 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 they gave you access yeah. to loans before the maturity had kicked in yeah okay makes a makes makes a lot of sense and sometimes you're desperate you need you need that yeah yeah that uh, that the money yeah right? yeah so yeah because i mean if you have a and then the thing with the u.s <laughs> they're quick if you ain't gotta if you don't pay your bill cut off that's when you that's when the lights go off mm -hmm. in, the, in the u.s when you don't pay your bills okay you know? so so you know you have <laughs> so they go off but uh, they, they know when <laughs> then they know when you know mm -hmm. like your cable bill um you know uh, yeah it's just things gas mm. you know um you know clothes i mean in, in us again they have 
different seasons mm. so it's not like i mean literally the fall you have to buy different clothes for that the winter different clothes because you, you're wearing and i don't know maybe it's just a stigma thing yeah you know, maybe it's just all in our minds too because we are so spoiled we think that we have to but maybe we don't yeah uh but it's true you have clothes for different seasons but also in the workplace you expect it to look a certain and way and then in the workplace and that's where most of the money goes to actually that's a great point that you brought up mm. especially if you're black oh man right i would tell you i you see i i got sister locks i did this two years ago when i when i got my own company mm. whoa right i would have never gone for an interview with hair like this i would never get the job oh period. man i never went to an interview with braids on oh i never went man. to yeah i mean i was yeah you thought i'm dressed up nice <laughs> proper like like i was like you know nothing to give them the fact of nothing like nothing like i'm not gonna give them that no i did this two years ago Yo. and now when i have my own company i was like look if you look at my hair you don't want to give me a job i'm cool with that <laughs> you know uh but yeah that's it I, i'm understanding how the, the, the yeah, roadblocks the, 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 the there's things, just the mountains. everything yeah it's just a lot it's just a lot so when you see people now transitioning they, there's a reason why mm. right because it's always something after something like even, i got this education now you don't want to hire me because of my hair are you serious you know even how you speak yeah. you can't go there hello i would like to apply for a job <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, what are you, yeah no you hang out like like you know like they, they're not even they can't even yeah that's because because yeah. a lot of kenyans come back with an accent mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah. but the accent is for survival it is the survival mode this is so like mind-blowing it's a survival mode yeah and then and be nice is 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 is, is you gotta turn that off yeah you see uh auntie wageshi was a horror of people i'm just wanna say <laughs> she needs to survive yeah <laughs> <laughs> she do like yeah thank you you you, you said it right there it's, no. it's it's a survival mode yo it's not that i'm being bougie it's not yeah. that I, like i there's like that's i want i want to talk like that that's a barrier if they can't yeah. understand me yeah. you know some cafe <laughs> yeah you, you, yeah they, they'll be like what you know okay oh that that's huge okay huge? So, so let's go on with, you, with your story by the amazing story mm -hmm. like i'm just seeing such intellectual grind that's the first time i ever used that adjective yeah, damn, <laughs> damn like look at him He's, you've been to school in the u.s <laughs> no i'm like you are intellectual. intellectually intentional calculated on your grind it's yeah. not just a grind yeah when you're talking about the hair i'd not seen from that perspective mm -hmm. yeah but now i love it okay so mm -hmm. where where does it go to next where does it go to next mm -hmm. um so it so I, i i become a man actually you know what oh wow i missed the the other point uh where i I moved to Virginia. Okay, I got engaged. Mm -hmm. uh.